Welcome to this video about the BBC Microbit. In this video, I'm going to introduce the Microbit to you. Um, I'm going to show you how to code a simple program and how to then download that program onto the Microbit. The BBC Microbit is a brilliant piece of kit. Um, it's got lots of different sensors. It has buttons, an accelerometer, compass. It's got uh, an LED display for outputting. It is a little computer. It takes an input, it processes it, um, it outputs, and it's got some storage. But it's not like a computer that you're used to using, or even a small computer like a Raspberry Pi where you can plug a keyboard, a mouse, or a monitor in. Instead, the micro bit needs to have another computer, a proper big computer, um, where you do all of the code editing, and then you download these little tiny hex files and they contain the binary instructions that are actually run on the microbit to make it do things. So to get started with our BBC microbit we need to go onto a web browser and we're going to go to the BBC microbit website which is just microbit.org and once you're at microbit.org you just need to click on the let's code link in the top menu bar and then you get a choice of code editors and the one that we're going to start with is the JavaScript blocks editor. Now, if you know a little bit of Python or you've experimented with that, then you can actually write programs in Python uh, that run on your BBC Microbit, and you might like to do that once you understand how to download a program and copy it onto the Microbit. But to start with, we're just going to do the JavaScript blocks editor. So let's click the Let's Code button there, and the code editor will appear on the screen. Now, as a quick overview, let's talk about what we've got here. So on the left-hand side, um, is a simulator of your microbit and you can use that to run your programs without having to download them to test how well they'll work. Uh, then we've got um, a selection of blocks. So these are the categories of blocks that you can use in your program. Uh, under basic are some simple controls. Uh, then we've got under inputs it are blocks for testing what you're doing. So it might be that you're shaking it or pressing a button. There are music blocks which can output sound. You have to connect some headphones or a speaker uh, to the output terminals, but you can generate sounds. There are several for controlling the LED display. Um, radio has blocks which you can use to actually communicate between more than one uh, microbit wirelessly, so you can send messages to another, uh, another microbit, which is a really great feature. Um, loops is where you'll find things like repeat or for loops and while loops uh, and these enable your program code to run over and over and over again uh, in depending on different conditions being met. Logic is where you'll find if and else and also the blocks that allow you to do tests like is something equal to something or greater than something or less than something. Under variables, you can set your own variables to temporarily store data while your program's running. And under math, or maths as it should be, um, you'll find blocks that will allow you to do arithmetic. And there are some advanced functions as well, which if you uh, do some of the projects you'll find online, will probably um, they will show you some of those more advanced features. But today we're going to stick with some of the basics. So. Here's our code area. Now this is where, uh, a bit like Scratch, we would add our blocks. And I should just say, you can switch between blocks mode and JavaScript mode. Um, so you can actually experiment with writing your programs in JavaScript. Uh, but we're gonna stick with blocks. So our very simple program is just going to um, allow us to press the A and B button. And when we do, it will just show an arrow that points at whichever button's been pressed. So it's not a very exciting program, but it shows you the basics. So let's make our program. When we start up, we want to just display something on the screen, like ready, so that people know that the microbit is up and ready to do something. So let's go to basic, and we're going to grab show string. And I'm going to put that in the on start block. And you'll notice that the simulator has already begun uh, displaying a simulation of what you would see on the microbit. Well, we're going to change the text, so let's click in there and write ready, and the simulator will update. So let's just move that to one side, that's our start code done. Now, the next thing we want to do is have some kind of um, detector that we've pressed the A button. And if we want to do that, we can go to input, 
and go on button A pressed. So we're going to drag that down. We're going to say, well, when button A is pressed, we want an arrow to appear pointing to button A. So we're going to need to play with the LEDs. So we're going to go back to basic and show LEDs. And I'm going to drop that in. And I'm going to draw my um, little arrows. OK, so that's an arrow pointing to the left. And I can test that by pressing the A button. And once my message is finished showing, that should show. Yes, it does. And let's now just see about doing the same thing, but for the B button. So I'm going to go back to input. I'm going to go on button A pressed again, but this time, notice it grays it out because I've already got on button A pressed. Uh, but I can change this to B. So on button B pressed, I'm going to grab some more LEDs and I'm going to draw an arrow that points to the B button. So now, if we just test this in the simulator, it shows ready when we begin. And once that's finished showing, I can press the A button to show an arrow to the A button and B to show an arrow to the B button. OK, now it's not terribly exciting, but this could be useful uh, maybe if we made like a quick reaction game. But my program works, and that's the key thing. And now I want to download it and put it onto the microbit. So let's see how we do that. The first thing we need to do is give our project a name. So down here where it says Untitled, I'm going to call that um, AB Arrows. And I'm going to press Enter. Oops, I'm going to press the Save button, actually. And when I do that, it will start downloading automatically this .hex file. And that's the binary file that I want to put on my microbit. So we need to connect the microbit to the computer. Well, I've got my USB cable here, and it's connected to my computer. So I'm going to plug that into the socket at the top. And my microbit will fire up, and it actually shows the last program that was installed. And that was a simple program just to show a square in this case. But that has now been um, connected to the computer. So if I now go to uh, the Finder, I'm on a Mac. It'd be slightly different on a, on a Windows computer. You'd have to go to uh, this PC. Or on a Chromebook, you go to your Files. Uh, but I'll just show you how to do it on the Mac first of all. So I'm going to go to the Finder uh, down here. And I should see that I've got Microbit has appeared as one of my devices. It's also appeared on my desktop. I can double click on Microbit, and that shows me the contents of the Microbit. And there's nothing really there for you to play with. Uh, but what we need to do is find that file that's just been downloaded. Well, that will be in our Downloads folder. So that's here. If you don't have access to your Downloads folder, you might be able to click, if you're in Chrome, on this down arrow here and go Show in Finder. Uh, and that will take you to the Downloads folder. And all I need to do now is drag my hex file from Downloads onto my Microbit. And it will instantly restart and start flashing. So it's restarted now. And my program, let's see if I press the Reset button on the back, let's see if it works. So I've pressed the Reset button. And it says Ready, as we'd expect it to. And once that's finished, I should be able to press my A button, see my arrow, and my B button. OK, and that's my program running and working on my BBC Microbit. So that's covered everything we need to do for this lesson. You've learned how to um, go to the code editor, how to get started writing a simple program, how to download that program to your computer, and how to add it onto your Microbit. Now, if you happen to have a different computer from a Mac, then stick around for just a couple more minutes because I'm going to show you how to do this, first of all, on a Chromebook and then on a Windows PC. So I've got some screenshots here of how to do this on a Chromebook. I couldn't get a good screencasting program working on my uh, Chromebook, so I've had to do this just with screenshots. But let me talk you through what we're seeing here. So when we start off, uh, connecting our microbit to the Chromebook, it will tell you that a removable device has been detected. And you can open up the microbit folder in the Files app if you want to. If you do that, you will see that amongst all of your files on your Chromebook, there's a microbit um, uh, section, a microbit drive showing. And you can click on that, and it shows you some of the contents of that drive. So when we're in, the, uh, in Chrome, in your microbit code editor, you will see uh, it's exactly the same as I've just shown you. Um, and you can give your program a name and press Save. and Or press the green Download button. 
And once it's downloaded, uh, you'll get a message telling you it's downloaded has completed and you should see a notification appear telling you that that file has been downloaded and you can click on show in folder and it will show you that downloaded file. Remember you're looking for ones that start with microbit and end in dot hex. So that's in your downloads folder, that's where you'll find it um, and you need to drag it from your downloads folder onto the microbit so you're just going to click and drag and drop onto the microbit. When you do that you'll see it says copying the file and that will only last there for a few seconds and once that's happened the micro bit will restart so you'll get a warning whoa there be careful in future make sure you eject your removable device don't worry about that for micro bits um, and then once the micro bit has restarted it should again tell you that there's a removable device that's been detected and if you then go to your micro bit you will again see that your program should now be running and working on the micro bit. So here I am, I'm on my Windows 10 computer and I've got my program running inside Chrome again and I'm ready to copy it onto my micro bit. So first thing I'm going to do is connect it to the computer. And my micro bit has started to fire up so I know that it's got power and it's connected. And if I go onto my computer, I should see that I now have, under this PC, the microbit drive. So I can double click on that and I can see the microbit files. So I need to download uh, my project like I did before. So let's click the download button. And that's downloaded my hex file. I'll just press yes, OK, thank you. And I've got my hex file ready to copy onto the microbit. So I'm going to go back to uh, this PC. I'm going to go to my downloads. And here is the file I've just downloaded. And I'm going to expand this PC so I can see all my drives. And I just need to click, drag, and drop that onto the micro bit. It'll start flashing, telling me that it's copying. And of course, it says on the screen that it's copying the file. And once that's finished, it will restart the micro bit and it will run the program that it's just copied over. And that's all there is to it. Just the same as on a Chromebook or a Mac, you just need to know where to look to find the microbit drive and your downloads.